So we've got our salmon for the teriyaki. It's already pre-sliced, ready to go. The salmon's out, plus everything I need to make the teriyaki sauce. Now I'm gonna make a really old school, traditional teriyaki sauce. A lot of the stuff we see at the restaurants is full of cornstarch, so it's really goopy. Now teriyaki should be just a really wonderful, simple glaze of soy sauce and a little bit of mirin or sugar. So what we'll do first is I wanna take the salmon and season it. Even though there's teriyaki sauce on it, I want the salmon to have some of its own natural flavor. If we'll take the fillets, and just, you know, a nice dusting of a little bit of kosher salt and a little bit of coarse pepper. This can be, again, any kind of pepper. I'm using white here, but black would work as well. You have to season both sides of the fish. Just a little sprinkling. Perfect, excellent. Before I make my sauce, I'm gonna turn on the stove to preheat my pan, because I definitely want a hot pan. So that's on high, ready to go. Salmon seasoned, that's ready to go. Now you don't want to season the salmon or any kind of meat way in advance. Salt has a tendency to draw out moisture from meat. So just season right before you're gonna cook it. To make teriyaki sauce, very old school, is very simple. So let's go back to our base Japanese ingredients. Thinking about the taste. This is soy sauce, so this is going to be salty, right? A little bit of mirin, and mirin again is sweetened sake. So we want the mirin to make up about half of that, and now the actual sake. Now we cook with sake because it imparts a really wonderful aroma. We're gonna cook off all that alcohol, so don't worry about the alcohol content. It's gonna turn into this really nice kind of bouquet of aromas. It's almost floral when it's cooked down, so just a touch there. And in order to make this a nice glaze, we're gonna need a little bit of sugar. Think about this as making like caramel. We need a little sugar to really caramelize. So even though this looks like a lot of sugar, remember it's for four servings of salmon. So it's not that much actually. So we'll stir that together. And I'm using dehydrated cane sugar, which is actually organic and all natural. So that's a good thing. That's ready. So the salmon is about ready to go. I'm gonna take a little bit of canola oil or high temperature oil to cook this with. So just a few drizzles. It's important you wait for white smoke because that's gonna be the visual indicator of this pan being at that perfect temperature to sear salmon. A lot of people cook fish incorrectly. The pan's not hot enough, the fish isn't kind of patted dry, so the fish tends to stick. By making sure this pan is preheated and the smoke kind of starts billowing, the fish is gonna sear and it's gonna release. So you won't get that sticking problem from the fish. So I'm gonna distribute that oil to cover the bottom of the pan really well. And then I'm just waiting for that little bit of white smoke to come off and that's gonna happen any second now. All right, I can see the vapor starting. So the salmon's ready to go. If you see any moisture that's kind of been seeping off, take a little paper towel and just dab it, but that's perfect. There's that white smoke I'm looking for. And the secret now is just to put the salmon down and away from you. So down and away, just like that. Because we were nice and patient and waited for that smoke, the salmon is basically gonna hit the pan, sear, and then lift up on its own. A lot of cooks tend to go in too early and try to move the protein or the salmon around and it's stuck. Another nice way to kind of start checking or another good way to tell if it's time to flip is this. Move that pan back and forth. If you're moving the pan back and forth and the salmon is free floating and moves around, you know right away it's not gonna be stuck. This is a fish turner. Its only job is to really get under fish perfectly. A couple advantage of the fish turner is it's flexible. So you really can maneuver way under and the edges are ground, not to a point like a knife, but they are ground down so you can get in really tight. So I'm gonna get under the first piece and just check for a nice browning. I'm gonna let that go just for another second or so. Now there's no need to rush this either. A lot of cooks also think you need to cook fish 50% on one side and 50 on the other. There's only one presentation side on food, so I'm really looking for a really beautiful golden brown on one side. So it's really okay to cook it 60% on one side and 40 on the other. So don't worry about you know even cook times on both. All right, so let's take a look at color here. That's nice, that's about what I want right there. So I'm gonna do a nice flip over now. Excellent. 
And this is a very old school traditional Japanese teriyaki. So what happens is the sauce that I made is gonna go into this hot pan now. Now do be careful because there is a little bit of oil in here. You don't want a little flash over. So it's important to kind of pour away from you. And I would let it go over the fish. And then all we'll do is let this reduce at this point. So if you think about what's happening in the pan, we've cooked down our fish on one side. All those really great little bits that have stuck, we call that fond. That is the foundation of flavor. The soy sauce and the sake and the mirin are going in now and lifting those up. So all those flavors are marrying together. So as you can see, the sauce is reduced into a glaze. So when you think about teriyaki, I want you to think about making it yourself at home and using the sauce to reduce to a glaze naturally with none of those thickeners like cornstarch or tapioca starch. Once the sauce is thickened to a glaze, you're pretty much done. So I'm gonna take this off heat, push it forward, and I've made some rice ahead of time. And I'll be serving that with rice. So for the plate up, it's pretty simple. A little bit of rice as a base, and I probably wouldn't use more than about a cup per serving right down the middle. And then we'll bring a piece of salmon over. And I'm gonna pick my nicest one, and I, I like this one quite a bit. So how about right over the top? And then of course, we gotta put a little of the teriyaki sauce on. And that'll go right on. And you wanna give them enough so each bite has a nice little piece of, of teriyaki sauce. So just a nice little glaze. And if you wanna get really fancy with it, sure, put a little on the plate. Excellent. And then what we'll do is take a little bit of sesame seed and throw it right on top. 